So I just got done reading a, a pretty interesting article on uh, municipal bonds, the safety of municipal bonds. And uh, I actually want to report back to you on this. I think it's interesting. I'm sitting here waiting for my daughter at Georgia Tech. It's a beautiful day. It's going to be hard to see I'm much out of here. But you just look at that sun, no cloud in the sky, a nice cool breeze. It's, uh, it's fantastic. So I get a lot about, uh, well, bonds have safety that stocks don't have. And I, it was absolutely as valid to there. I mean, bonds, municipal bonds, and particularly GOs, uh, government obligation bonds, are literally backed by the issuing authority of the state or municipality, the city, which means taxpayers backed them. Uh, here's the issue. What are municipal, county, and state finances like today when it comes to pensions? Well, the pensions are in a world of hurt, right? But the pensioners, i.e., the working people, you know, the uh, the trash guy, the, uh, the the county tax assessor, off staff of the county tax assessor office. I'm not sure I'm parked in the right place. If you see me looking around, I'm just looking to see if there's anyone who's going to come to help me to move. These are not in good shape. Um, <clears throat> we know for a fact, Chicago. Illinois, New Jersey, New York, the lit Kentucky, the list goes on and on and on about the municipalities and the, the cities and the states and the county governments that are, are just in a world of hurt when it comes to their pension obligations. But these are obligations they have to their voters. Now, some of these voters are probably going to move. They're going to move from New York to, uh, to Miami or something like that. So they really can't vote in New York anymore. Uh, but a lot of them are going to stay, stay, in, stay in place. We know that for a fact. So if these voters stay in place and they're relying on the municipality to provide them a pension because that is they're obligated to. And we have uh, precedence that says you cannot, after the fact, change the pension obligations which are contractually obligated for. Uh, what happens uh, when, when situations get dicey where they can't pay the pensions anymore? Well, we'll we're seeing this across the country, across the globe. Austerity programs kick in. Uh, we're going to have increasing taxes, increasing property taxes. And what does that do to the tax base? Well, it erodes it. So basically, look at uh, what comp some company just left New York and moved to Nashville. Alliance Bernstein. Uh, they said, screw this, we're moving to Nashville. There's no state income tax, it's more tax friendly. I'm sure they got some state tax incentives. So now New York City, I'm sure it's New York City, uh, they lost a significant tax base uh, to help finance their pension obligations and whatnot, and Nashville gained one. Uh, I don't know the, st the structure of Nashville in terms of their, uh, their structural uh, finance capacity. I, I don't know what it is, but I guarantee it's higher than New York City. So now if you're in New York and you're issuing bonds, you just lost that tax base, you still have these obligations contractually obligated to pay your union guys and even your non-union guys, it doesn't matter, but they still have this contractual obligation to pay these people a certain amount of money at retirement uh, guaranteed, and that can't go away. And that's, you know, I mean, that's one of the things about the anti-right to work laws, which I, I'm somewhat sympathetic for. It says, look, the non-union guys are, are getting the benefits of the union uh, negotiating tactics, and we should get some money for that. I, look, I get that, where the union shot themselves in the foot, those were going into these far left uh, political things that comes to gun control, abortion, and all this. That's just stupid. They should have just kept straight on with the union activities, and they would have a lot more sympathy among uh, most uh, people in, in non-union environments, for sure. But when you start going down that left-wing uh, route, man, you don't have any sympathy for me at all. Um, anyway, but that but that makes sense. They're saying, look, non-union guys are being represented essentially by union guys' contracts, and they're going to get the same benefits, and they're not paying anything. I mean, I get that. Uh, but I think that that uh, that that uh, that train has left the station for sure. Anyway, so now you got these pension obligations. You got a tax base that's dwindling, and the fact the big tax base that is uh, that's providing you the tax structure in which to meet these pension obligations. Uh, the, the wealthy people and the businesses are fleeing as well, and so your tax basing is eroding. But it's not just an erosion of a, a dollar for dollar. You're losing significant amount of the wealthy who are leaving to uh, to better climes tax wise. What does that have to do with municipal bonds? Well, what's a municipal bond? It's no different than a pension obligation. It's GO, and some are not even GO, government obligated. Well, there's a shrinking tax base. 
All right, so the shrinking tax base on top of a revenue stream that is already decimated on top of the fact that they don't have the money to pay the bills as it is. I think, was it Chicago or maybe the state of Illinois? Uh, they just issued bonds in which to pay off other, to essentially pay off the pensioners. And I think it was Chicago, maybe it was the whole state. They issued government obligation bonds to pay off the pensioners on the pensions that they have. They don't have the cash flow to finance the debt, the pension obligation. So they issue bonds that, you know, we'll pay you later for a hamburger today. But the issue is at some point that that train, they can't keep going. I mean, that, that, that will stop because no one's going to loan you money. I mean, it's like, it's like borrowing on a credit card to pay off another credit card and not paying down the principal. At some point, uh, there's no more credit cards that are going to loan you money. There just isn't any. But the taxpayers are guaranteeing it. Well, yeah, but the taxpayers dwindling tax base uh, and there is no more tax. What are you going to do? Raise property taxes to 100%? I mean, at some point, it's just you can't. There, there's nothing. You can't get water from a rock. Which goes to my whole thing about municipal bonds. Are they truly safe? All right, especially for 20, 30 year. Uh, I just, I, I, I would argue no. Um, they're not safe, any more safe than a corporate bond. I mean, I, I get it. They have the taxing authority. The taxing authority is contingent on a tax paying base though. It's contingent on a tax paying base that we've already admit, established that is not there to finance the obligations that are already out there in terms of pensions and whatnot. We know this for a fact. We know for a fact. So a company or a state or municipality or a city to issue bonds in which they, because they don't have enough tax revenue in order to pay uh, their obligations, they issue bonds, which are just another debt, which they use to pay their obligations. In fact, I think it's some, I think again, going back to Chicago, I think they issue bonds to pay the interest off the bonds they're already obligated to pay. Anyway, the point about this is, man, I, I, the idea that municipal bonds, municipality bonds, municipal bonds are safe, I just think you gotta think again, especially when your context of looking at safety, uh, corporate bonds, uh, U.S. Treasury bonds, and, uh, and stocks, I, I just think you might have to rephrase this to say, look, these aren't nearly as safe as what you might think. And then we look at the bonds of GM, uh, the, uh, the contractual obligation was just thrown out the window when it came to financing uh, the union contracts for sure. Uh, the bondholders are always the last, always the last to have any kind of uh, uh, stake to the claim because they say, look, I'm gonna pay uh, the Joe, who's part of the union who votes for me, or I'm gonna pay a bonds, uh, Wall Street bondholder, who's gonna get the money? Well, I'm gonna, I mean, we've seen this in countries all throughout history. The, the, the capitalist, the, the loaner, the bondholder, the guy who loaned money to you will always get short shift there. And, and it makes sense. I mean, he's a rich guy. He can, he can take a pay cut. Whereas a guy who uh, worked on a fire department for many years uh, with his voting block of uh, a member's union or not, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, who do you think is going to get the ball here? I mean, just it doesn't. I mean, what's a politician serving to do? They're serving to get reelected. That's what they do. So they have to kick the can down the road in terms of dealing with taking a, a haircut for a corporate titan uh, ped, uh, you know, uh, bondholder. They're gonna do that as opposed to a union guy who represents 70,000 votes. It's gonna happen every time. So I'd reconsider the idea that municipal bonds are safe. I'd reconsider that. At some point, we're gonna have to pay them. Now, the same thing can be uh, argued with treasury bonds too. I get that all the time. Well, if municipal bonds aren't safe, how about US treasuries? We're knee deep in debt too. No, I, I, I get that, I get that. Uh, the difference though is the treasury can print money, uh, the, the municipalities can't, and that's the difference there. And you might not like that, uh, but that's just a fact, is that the they have the printing press for the federal government where the municipalities don't. They just have the tax base and the tax base is eroding. And that's the difference why of the two, the treasuries are safer inherently because they can inflate their currency uh, to redeem their debts essentially. And this is what happened throughout time as well. And the other alternative stocks, are stocks safer? Well, uh, no, in a short time. Uh, and I hate to say the stocks in the long term are not safer because I've talked about that before. There is no long term. You're always in the short term. But the simple facts are, at least with stocks, with the risk, you're getting a reward, presumably. With municipal bonds, you're taking on significant risk and not really getting a reward. Uh, not after inflation taxes. It's just not happening. Not, oh, you don't pay tax on municipal bonds. Exactly. You're not paying taxes, which is why the rates are so low, which is why after taxes and inflation, you're losing money on any bonds because the tax, the rates are so low on municipal bonds to begin with to offset the fact that there's no taxes due. Um, anyway, so relative to stocks, municipal bonds and corporate bonds, 
Uh, you just got to make an argument. Are they are stocks truly riskier than these things? Tough to say, man. Tough to say. I mean, corporate bonds. Yeah, I may think you make an argument that stocks certainly are riskier than corporate bonds. But are stocks riskier than municipal bonds? Oof, that's a tough. That's tough to say. On any given year with volatility, sure, absolutely. The volatility in a stock will certainly be higher on any given year than a municipal bond. But uh, what happens if the municipal bond just decides not to pay? What do you do? Anyway, something to think about. All right, we'll see you next time.